When it comes to this strategic council, is this sort of jumping before you're pushed? Uh, David, you know, you're right to say that this is a turning point. Uh, when we came out of the weekend at first and the Merck CEO uh, uh, stepped aside uh, from an advisory role, it was unclear whether we were looking at one people, two people. This is a much broader statement now by a cross-section of uh, CEOs. and. Uh, it does seem that the effort in this case uh, in Mr. Schwartzman's group was to let the White House know in advance and make a statement so that it wouldn't be you know, quite as embarrassing or as a surprise. But um, all of these executives have different reasons for wanting to step back, uh, wanting to distance themselves. But together, it's painting an important picture, which is that corporate America is increasingly uncomfortable with uh, President Trump's rhetoric and approach to a national tragedy over the course of the last several days. So as a practice, Matt, practical matter, does this make it easier for a Jamie Dimon, for example? People were starting to single out Jamie Dimon, saying, why aren't you resigning? He doesn't have to do that now. They've shut the whole thing down. Well, yeah, that's a really good point in the case of the Strategic uh, Council. But, you know, the question is whether you serve on a council or an advisory board or not, or, or whether you're just someone who uh, comes to the White House and once in a while will uh, appear with the president at a public event, uh, will suggest or promote or steer policy issues. The question going forward goes beyond these advisory councils. It goes to whether the relationship between this president, this White House, and, uh, and major U.S. CEOs is now going to be permanently affected or whether this is uh, temporary distancing, uh, just a, a positioning in the short term. And a lot of that may have to do with the president's actions going forward. A lot of that uh, also may have to do with what kind of businesses the CEOs represent, whether these are uh, government contractors or whether these are uh, outfacing businesses uh, that have a, a brand and are marketing uh, to diversity and also some of the personal views of these CEOs. So I think we see a lot of different um, considerations at work, but this is now more than just uh, one or two executives. Indeed, Margaret, but you raise a very good question. Is this, it's not good optics for the president. There's no question about that. Is it anything more than optics? Because after all, even when these councils were really going full steam, the president would tweet out things that could be critical of some of the companies who were represented on the councils. Yeah, that's right. And we saw in sort of a separate matter today with the president tweets about Amazon and it affects uh, Amazon, at least in the short term, and, and, and then those numbers coming back. So I do think that is part of the consideration. Uh, uh, but again, this is a fluid situation, but when you look at it en masse, it is uh, CEOs, some of whom have had a, a, a close consulting relationship with this White House, and others of whom have at least agreed to uh, add their names to the mix, saying to varying degrees uh, that they are just uh, increasingly uncomfortable with the way this situation has been handled and reluctant to tie their own names or their company's names to the decision-making process of this White House. So, it, it's a it really is a matter of concern. And in terms of what it could mean, the question is when lawmakers come back from the August recess, when the president tries to work with Congress now to uh, deal with issues like raising the debt ceiling, uh, and of course, uh, whether there's tax reform or at least a tax cut uh, by the end of the year, it is at that point that selling these ideas, shaping these ideas, getting buy-in from key stakeholders in the business community as well as the political community is really going to be important.